today we'll be looking at Cisco Packet Tracer and how to configure a simple office network. Let's say for instance you want to set up an office network. You could always go into the market, get yourself a couple of switches, install them in your, in your building or your office space and you can start configuring from there. But sometimes you find that it's better to design the system from a software point of view, simulate it, see how effective it is and from there you'll be able to see how many challenges or how many obstacles you'll possibly come across, what you need to change and where you can improve on before implementation of the network. With this, it will be a more economical approach for you as you design your system. So let's assume that this is the office space you want to set up. You have a couple of departments, the marketing, management, accounts, human resource. You will obviously need a server room and the sales department. So what if these are five departments and you want to have internal communications limited only to the marketing and only an exterior path to the internet through the server room. You could always go buy five switches, install them, create a default gateway and then give them internet access. But then you find that during the configuration of the network you'll be coming with so many obstacles along the way. You'll find yourself constantly running to the shop to get something else. So the best way in my opinion is first of all design it using a simulation tool or an emulator tool you'll find everything that you need there and once your network is set up and you are comfortable with all the configurations now you can go buy the equipment and the installation and setup will be very easy so this is what we'll be doing today we'll be setting up a small office space marketing management and all the rest and we'll restrict communication to only departmental computers and the internet access obviously so let me start up packet tracer but before that this is what we'll cover today i'll keep this open so that we can see we'll cover how to set up a host name for each of the switches a banner this is a greeting message that you see whenever you log into the switch remotely or through the console port we'll need a console password this is necessary in case you are Telenetting in or using the secure shell to access it. You will also need an enable password. This is necessary when you are activating the global mode, global configuration mode remotely. A management IP. This will allow you to access these switches remotely from your server room. Because you could always carry your computer to each switch every time you need to configure something else. But that's tiresome. So a management IP allows you to have one workstation that accesses all the switches in the office space and that means you'll also need a default gateway you can also have a shutdown command whereby there are switches or there are ports <coughs> you want to switch off you can always negate a command and you can always save the configuration in the case <coughs> you can always save the command all the configuration this because when as long as the switch is on you will have your running configuration but what if there's a power may, maybe a brownout or maybe the power disappears and the switch comes back on if all this configuration hadn't been saved you lose it all you'll have to start again from a fetch from the start sorry that means i'll need to show you how to save this configuration from the running configuration and you can save it into the startup configuration so first things first, let me start Packet Tracer. If you don't know how to set up Packet Tracer to start up immediately, you type that into your terminal. Go look at the first video for this series and you'll find everything to your liking there. So I'll quickly set up a wallpaper so that it can guide us during the development process of the system. So today's episode, I'll be focusing more on setting up communication from switch to switch to switch and in the next series we'll also add computers and so on and so forth as we go forward so now that this wallpaper is set up I'll start bringing in switches I think I will have to get rid of this so many departments one two three four five and our master switch Set. 
so that's our master switch let's we'll have for marketing for management for sales what else the human resource and accounting accounts and those this is your server switch so from that point it's always possible let's say i go into this switch when you come to the configuration panel <coughs> i'll show you how to change the switch the host name later on but first of all let's label them for easy tracking even visually so that's the marketing switch this is the management switch this is the account switch human resource Finally, we'll have the sales switch. Server switch. So it's always possible to go into each one. Now, because I've decided to set up this network using the same IP range, I'll be working with 192. Let me quickly draw this. So this is my network IP range. I will be working with 192.168.1.0.24. By 24, I mean this is with the Netmask 255 for class C 255 255.0. This will be my huge class C network. But within all these departments, I'll subnet it slowly, piece by piece, to ensure that every IP range within the network is properly submitted and then with that I'll be able to set up virtual LANs to ensure that each computer within these departments only communicates with computers within the same department. So to begin I'll first of all connect them quickly. You will notice that as I add the wires, each one will go, will become green piece by piece. <coughs> this is because they are all doing what we call an ARP, an address resolution protocol. This is whereby each switch or each device immediately it's connected. As I connect them, you'll see it immediately sends a hello world communication. If you may, you see the first one has set up. That's where it connects to the master switch or the master device and says hey i want an ip range and the master switch or the master device is it a router or a switch as in our case will respond and will be like this is what i have to offer you and that's how the arc works and now as you can see all of them are working effectively that is there is communication if you are to run a simple simulation test you will see that it's possible to send a message from each switch as you can see the switch from accounts has sent the switch from HR they are all communicating so back to configuration now I don't want to go to each network setting up a virtual LAN because in my case I've decided that I'll have let's have another diagram here I've decided I'll set up my network to use virtual LANs and this is the number of virtual LANs I'll be using. Let me show you. I'll be having VLAN 10. These, the virtual LANs essentially allow you to restrict communication within the departments and the VLAN 10 will be restricted to the IP range of 192.168.1. 
26.0.0.26 by 26. I am using a classless form whereby the, in this case I am borrowing one bit. By borrowing one bit in the 255, 255, 255, you are borrowing one bit from the last segment from this. This is where you are borrowing the last bit. I think I'll create another series to show you how we create classless networks but for the time being let's work with this. So this will be VLAN 20 and I'll give it the IP range of let's say so first of all before I even continue you find that I want to subnet my network and I'm subnetting it in one two three four five ranges now when it comes to subnetting you have to know how to use borrowing bits because for instance when I've borrowed one bit as in my case here Borrowing one bit has divided my network into two subnets and these two subnets will be restricted from 0 to 128 no from 0 to 127 and from 128 to 255 but then you find that if it's th that case I cannot have five subnets so what do you do to further subnet your network you can borrow a second bit by borrowing a second bit it means that you'll be working with place values of 64 as is the case here in VLAN 20 you see I want to work with a place value of 64 so what do I do I borrow two bits and then this one is VLAN 30 and since I want it to be within my subnet I borrow another two bits VLAN 40 another two bits and this will allow me to continue subnetting them further sorry for this is 96 so the value 96 64 by borrowing two bits it means that it, every the ranges I'll be working with this one is borrowing one bit and then this one is borrowing two bits from 24 which is for class C so 24 25 26 that's how I'm getting here now in 27 32 my IP ranges should be separated by 32 and in this case the 26 it means that I had borrowed two bits sorry for the earlier confusion I had borrowed two bits which means that my subnet will be changing with 64 that's why in VLAN 20 I'm starting at 64 but in VLAN 30, after I've borrowed a third bit, I'll be adding 32 to all my ranges. So 96 plus 32, that's 128. 27. So this is VLAN 50. And finally, the IP range for our server. Let's uh, let's give it VLAN. No, sorry for this. Let's create VLAN 100. And obviously, it will start from 224. That is 192 plus 32. So the first VLAN will be for, let's say, the voice network, because every office obviously has phones yes and you cannot keep the the phone communications within the same ip range as maybe the marketing department or the management department because if you have a hacker or someone with malicious intentions in your network this person can easily access that phone by being in the same network so when you create virtual lands you are restricting co that computer to only access devices within the same network and thus effectively you are restricting all the voice communications within an inaccessible range that only you from the server room can access so let's give this one to marketing
and this one to sales account and this one to the H HR department and finally you will have your IT server room so with this let me drag it up right there so with this I'll be able now to give all these networks access and restrict them to their virtual lands now the second thing I don't want to go to each switch configuring it and giving it all these virtual networks so that I can access them from the server switch what I'll do is I'll go to the command line the iOS command line and I'll set all these other switches to be server to be client sorry so what do I do enable so let's see VTP status ah sorry for that Ah, sorry, sorry. Status. I'm checking for the wrong thing. So you can see that my VTP operating mode for the server switch is server. Since it's in server mode, I want when I create any version or when I make adjustments in one server or one switch, it reflects in all the other switches. So let's do that. So you have to know another thing with the iOS command line, if you type a question mark after your request, it will show you everything that you can do in that range. So first of all, sorry for this, let me change the host name of the switch. Let me call it the server switch. And you can see it has already changed. Called now the server switch. Next thing, I'll go to VTP. I'll change it to mode and when you look at the mode it can be either server, client or transparent. Client will always receive instructions, server will always be giving the updates to the VTP mode and the transparent switch will ignore any updates. So this one I want it to be in server, it tells it's in server. So now the next thing we need to configure it in order to have a domain, you'll find that as long as all your switches are within the same domain and have a common password, any configurations made in one will automatically reflect to the rest. So domain, let's say, conan.com. Now that I have changed that, uh, sorry, I was in the marketing switch and I give it the wrong name. So quickly, let's change it back to host name. Ma Marketing. And I'll change the VTP mode to client. I'll give it a VTP password as let's say Conan. Now, because I had initially made an error and set them all, the, in the first one to be a server, when I come here and look at the show VTP status, you'll find that they have all copied the same domain. No, it's still in server, which means it cannot copy. So I'll go into the server switch. I'll enable this, I'll go into the configuration mode.
and I'll give it the hostname server switch and I'll show visitor do show sorry do show VTP status is still in server mode which means I'll have to change all of that so what we do VTP domain conan.com next thing VTP password I'll say conan next thing VTP mode server and now notice that the VTP version here was 2 the thing with VTP or VLAN trunking protocol these are Cisco priori proprietary <laughs> software or something like that is that so long as the version is higher than the adjacent switches all these switches will download that setting so I am going to do VTP and check the version I am change it I'll give it version 2 <coughs> and now that that is done let's go over to the sales switch let's do show VTP status I'm gonna change this to client and change its host name and then let's say VTP domain Conan dot com vtp password let's say conan sorry for that and vtp mode client ah sorry vtp mode client so now let me exit from this <coughs> let's show vtp status it's in star server mode so what do we do change it to client mode let's give it a password now the thing with the password is unless the password matches and the domain matches this switch will not copy the updates from any other connected switch that's why we need the, com the same password for all the switches so let's see We set the password, we set the domain. Now we need to change the mode to client. Let's enable this. And this is the account switch, so first things first. We change the name. Post name account vtp mode client vtp domain conan.com another advantage of the having a domain is that if someone from an external network that it's not within your organization comes in and connects their own switch maybe for malicious intentions or whatever intentions they have unless the domain matches all your switches will ignore any form of updates that they receive from that switch so we set the password to conan and let's see do show vtp start it's in client this is the same domain and we set a password so with that can exit let's go to hr
let's give it a host name hr next thing we configure the vtp vtp mode client vtp password conan vtp oh we need a domain first conan.com and finally the vtp password conan now since we've set them all up let's check if we create a vlan what happens will it be reflected in all these switches that's the idea that's why we were setting the trunking protocol now to set up a trunking protocol it's very simple it's very very straightforward you simply go into the configuration mode and you type in vlan 10 vlan 20 vlan 30 <coughs> and you'll have that so ah, before we go further let me set up a banner for the server switch This is the server switch. Keep off. And let's use our character. So how does the banner come in? Let me exit and uh, control shift six. In case you find yourself in this scenario, where it's looking for domain name the ios is, is designed such that if you type anything that's not in the initial instructions it begins translating that as a domain name so can do no ip domain lookup no ip these are negating command ip domain ah so exit so initially as you log in your switch will appear like this that's if you log in using the console port you see your banner here is a greeting now i'm saying keep off but i've also not set up a password these are some of the things that we look at how to set up a password for the console so that if it's your server switch <coughs> any random person does not come in and simply log in so what do you do you tell it to show running that means that's a complete command so here you see the console doesn't have a password which means we need to set up a password for that and the VTY, these are the virtual telnet lines, you have 0 to 4 and 5 to 15. In a later video, I'll explain what the difference is between 0 to 4 and 5 to 15, despite the fact that they all work the same. So, let's set up a password for our console. Let's look at the possible instructions. Here, you see, you have the ability to set a password. So let's set up a password. Let's say Conan. And now let's exit. You see, I've exited, but after logging in again, yes, I have my banner, but it hasn't asked me for a password. So the thing is, you did not enforce the requirement that it should ask for a password. So we go back there, like console zero and we tell it login now once you've asked it to log in it means that whoever is connecting from whatever point they are connecting they'll need to enter a password to use the switch or rather to co configure it in any way you see now in this case we saw how to set up our banner and now it's asking for a password so type in conan 
enter you are in 